Hi, I'm Tom Hackett, and today's topic is an intuitive introduction to finite element analysis for electrical engineers, part two. In our last video, we looked at an example of a bridge structure and how civil engineers and mechanical engineers use finite element analysis to very accurately model real world structures. But I mentioned that in the electrical engineering world, we seldom talk about finite element analysis. And even though electrical engineering uh, requires many mathematical techniques to accomplish a job, we always try to use the simplest mathematical technique available to accomplish that job. And so let's take a look and kind of, just as in the mechanical world, we went from trigonometry to calculus to finite element analysis, we're going to see that we have three different styles of, of uh, operations that we can do in the electrical world as well. So starting out with a very simple uh, DC circuit, let's say this is a flashlight. So we have a battery, and we have a light emitting diode, and let's say this flashlight has a variable resistor, a knob we can turn to control the amount of current that goes through the diode, and that will control the amount of light that comes out at the end of the flashlight. So in this case, it's very easy to compute um, the current going through the diode. It's just we know from Ohm's law, voltage equals current times resistance. So we just solve for current, and we said it's voltage divided by resistance, and we get the current that will flow through the diode. So great, we've solved our problem with very simple math. Let's say we move from the direct current world into an alternating current world. So instead of a flashlight, let's say we have some kind of a transmitter. So we have an AC source, we've got an antenna over here, and some way to adjust the current going through the antenna, and it'll look a little more complicated because now we're using inductors and capacitors instead of resistors. But nonetheless, it's the basically the same layout. But instead of very simple math, we now have to use calculus to determine the current that's going to go around this loop. And we know that the voltage across an inductor is equal to the inductance times the derivative of the current with respect to time. And to get the, the current, we have to now rearrange things and do an integral, so we're in calculus, right? But by doing that, we can accurately, perfectly come up with the amount of current that'll flow around this loop, just like we did up here. And we can use that method, no matter how many components we put into a circuit like this, we can always solve it with these classical like calculus techniques. But this circuit isn't really what's built. Because when you take this ideal circuit and put it onto a printed circuit board, now we have other things that come into the picture. So let's say this transmitter is a chip, this tuner is some kind of control knob component, and then our antenna is hooked up over here, but we have metal traces on the printed circuit board connecting these things together. And these are on different layers of the printed circuit board. So I've drawn the orange traces to be on one layer, the green traces to be on another. And if you want to take a look at this in three dimensions, if we take a look at this guy over here, we'll say here's the one conductor coming in on one layer, going down through a cylindrical via, and out through this other trace on another layer. So that's what we're dealing with. And whereas in this circuit, we assume that the connections were a perfect ideal connection that didn't influence the circuit in any way, here we get a lot of influence from these traces. And depending on the frequency that we run at, uh, the impact can change the operation of the circuit and make it not accomplish what we want to accomplish. So we need some tools to extract out the effect of these conductors. And so we talk about this as extracting parasitic elements in certain contexts. In other contexts, we talk about these as being transmission lines. But it's really the same thing. And we can represent those as a set of like inductors and capacitors and resistors in a transmission line. Or for microwave analysis, we'll just say that's a black box component and it has certain S parameters. And that will allow us to do the math. But uh, anyway, we're taking into account the real world impact on our circuit. Now, there's a couple different ways that we can adjust for this real world impact. Uh, a very simple thing would be kind of a lookup table. For every, every unit length of the conductor, we'll say it adds some impedance. That's one way. 
Another way would be to do a 2.5D analysis, where we take into account the actual XY geometries, but for the Z direction, we just assume it's like some material property, okay, that goes along with those dimensions. But then the last and more accurate way would be to divide this up into a bunch of finite elements, as I've kind of shown along here. Divide that up into finite elements and do a true 3D finite element analysis. And from that, we can get very, very accurate models of uh, the impact of those traces on our circuit and get a very, very accurate result. Now, <clears throat> Why don't we do that like just all the time? Why don't we do it for every circuit? Well, it requires a lot of computing horsepower to get that done. And in fact, until recently, finite element analysis for say electromagnetic uh, simulations or thermal simulations uh, was really limited to kind of very small circuits. And in many cases, people might have to break up the transmitter section from the middle section to the connector or antenna section in order to get their job done. But Cadence has come out with some tools that kind of break through this capacity limitation problem. For electromagnetic analysis, the tool is called Clarity 3D Solver. And for thermal analysis, it's called Celsius Thermal Solver. And both of these are true 3D products, 3D finite element analysis products that get the job done with super accuracy, but they run about 10 times faster than existing tools. And they use about 10 times less memory than existing tools. So you're able to do an entire like circuit analysis or entire, entire thermal analysis all in one shot. And so anyway, that's what Cadence is contributing, I guess, to this whole finite element uh, discussion. And I hope you found this interesting. I'll put more links in the description if you want more information. And, uh, but for Whiteboard Wednesday, I'm Tom Hackett.